what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an out-the-front knife that I've never had the chance to even play with before it arrived on my doorstep just a few days ago. This is the Axial Knives Shift. And the reason why I find this to be intriguing, worthy of making a video of, and one that sparked my own curiosity pretty strongly is the fact that these are $250.00. Not 400, not 500, not you know, all those crazy prices we see. It's American made, it's got a lifetime warranty, and it's not the bullshit American made, it's actually really American made. Unlike those crappy, cheap out the fronts that you see at gun shows that they claim are American made, we'll talk a bit more about that in a few minutes. But I had a lot of questions about these knives, I wanted to know how they felt how strong the uh, springs were inside, how balanced it was, how the blade play was, you know, all the basic things that we look at when we're talking about spending a good chunk of change on an out the front. And I was curious to see how they would be able to achieve a good quality knife for a considerable amount of money less than what we're used to seeing in Heretic and Microtech and uh, a few of the other decent and good brands that are out there. And I got to tell you, from the very first time I touched it, I was impressed. This is a, before we get into the photography, before we get into the tabletop review, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is a pretty damn good knife. And I, I'm actually pretty excited to have this out here. Uh, this is one that I can tell you right now is going to be carried a lot. But there's a story to tell behind it, and there's a lot of details to get into. So without any further ado, I'd like to go ahead and do that right now. This is a good time to remind you to please like if you like the video, click like. I, I can't describe to you how helpful that really is. It sounds dumb, and I know as somebody that watches a lot of YouTube in, 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 in various times of the day and all throughout the week, it gets tiresome to hear content creators say that all the time but it actually makes a significant difference for us, for our subscriberships, for our views and everything else. So please, if you like the video, click like on there. If you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. That also helps as well. And if you feel so inclined, leave a comment down below. More activity there is down there, the more subscribers I end up getting and the more content I get to bring out to you. And uh, with that, let's head down to the tabletop review and see why I think this is one of the better values in the knife industry right now, particularly in a good quality out the front. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the Axial Knives Shift. Now, as I mentioned in the intro there, these are selling at $255 uh, to $260, depending on where you're looking at it, where you're buying it. And these are made in the USA. It's even on the, uh, on the box there. Now, where I got mine was uh, from Steel Capital. And I would suggest... Uh, checking them out because uh, the owner, Canon, is a great guy. Besides, you can't get a cooler name than Canon, right? Makes me wonder what happened during the birth. Dad gets home and he's like, hey, shut out of you like a fucking Canon. Or she's like, oh, it was so painful. His head was as big as a cannonball. I don't know. I don't know where the name came from, but it's cool and it's masculine and he's a good dude. 
Uh, so you want to check them out for any American-made knives you're looking for. That's really what they focus on uh, is American-made knives. So definitely check them out. Um, they have really great pricing. Um, they don't have a lot of knives on the website right now, uh, but they have really great pricing. The customer service is awesome. And uh, through Monday, September 5th, 2022, if you're watching it, uh, watching this right as I'm uploading it. They're running a sale across their entire website for 20% off if you use the code um, CAPITAL20, all lowercase, CAPITAL20. It's not my deal. doesn't have my name attached to it. It's just like, you know, it doesn't, doesn't say, you know, Jim's the smooth motherfucker 20. It's just CAPITAL20. It has nothing to do with me. That's just the sale they're running. So if you want to use that code to buy uh, an Axial or anything else they're carrying at the time, then go for it. There's your free 20% off. Now, let's get into the knife. Uh, Canon, thank you so, 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 so much uh, for making this available to me. I'll tell the story a little bit later on in the video, but right now, it's important to get into the knife. First off, this is the packaging. Nice, clean packaging. I like this. It's not junky. It's not overdone. Uh, it doesn't look like it was particularly expensive, but I love this black-on-black -black theme. You show it in the right light. There's the, uh, the outline, like the blueprint of your knife. The brand name is on the uh, side, nothing on the bottom. On one side is the American flag. The other side is the Axial logo, Axial logo again right here. And on this side, it lets you know which version you've got. This is the shift in aluminum in blue with the double edge CPM 20 CV stone washed blade. They have a few different blade shapes. Uh, two different blade steels and a couple different blade finishes. Now, they're not as big as Microtech, so they're not going to have an entire, you know, Skittles bag worth of colors in the bodies. They're not going to have uh, 25 different blade finishes and, and all that kind of good stuff. But as the brand grows, because they've only been around for about a year and a half, two years, as the brand grows, uh, especially in their popularity, I believe that you're going to be seeing... Uh, more and more options coming from them. Here is the inner box. Magnetic closure. Uh, it is signed by the person that, that uh, packs and inspects the knife. I like that touch. Here is your use and care manual. I mean, they've obviously spent their money. This, All these little things are not cheap. So it's uh, really nice to see this. They are based in Utah, by the way. Hey, give them a call and just say, hey, I saw Jim talking about your knife. Pretty sweet, dude and see how they react to it. Uh, no, don't, don't harass them. And then you get the microfiber bag that holds the knife. Wiggle that out. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And uh, clipped under the clip, I put this back the way that I found it, uh, is the Made in USA label. I actually, I believe that is a sticker if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that comes to you from Axial. So, um, that I think is going to be a big deal for a lot of people. Y'all know me, as long as it's a high quality knife and it's not a clone or a knockoff or anything like that, I don't care where it's made. I want good quality for the money I'm spending. Now, if I'm able to do that in a U.S. made product, that is all the better. And I think that's a fantastic thing that for not 300 not 400 but for 250 I've got an out the front here that seems to be of fantastic quality for $255. It's fast. It's very sure firing. The first thing uh, people are going to want to know is, how does this compare to an Ultratech? It fires harder and it feels more solid. Just that in a nutshell, I'll get more in depth a little bit later on, but I wanted to get that out of the way quick because I know that you're going to want to know that. And the next thing people are going to want to know is, well, Jim, you own the best out the front in the world. How does it compare? And I will talk to you about that as well in just a little bit. We will definitely make that comparison. But first, we're going to get into the specs because that is going to be important for a lot of people because there are still many people that don't even know this brand exists. So, you're looking at a double action out the front, overall length of 8.19 inches when it's open, blade length of 3.3 inches, cutting edge 3 and a quarter inches. So, this is really, really close to an Ultratech size if you have an Ultratech, but it's going to be taller. Uh, and it's going to be a little more substantial feeling. I'll just prepare you for that. Blade thickness is 125 thousandths of an inch thick. 
You have a choice in blade materials between S35VN or 20CV. And the length when closed is 4.95 inches with a handle thickness just under, I mean just a little hair under a half an inch. And the material, like uh, every other high-end out-the-front maker, is going to be uh, T6 6061 aluminum, and the weight is three and a half ounces. So, currently, Axial is making about 75% of their own parts. And the rest are made in U.S.-based machine shops under contract. So, everything that you're seeing is 100% made in the U.S. I want to make that very, very clear. Um, the other thing is they've been talking about in the almost immediate future, they're going to be making 100% of every knife in-house. And I'm sure that's quite a big investment and it takes some time to do that. But for a brand new company that basically just came out in 2021, I'd say it's pretty damn impressive. These are not cheap to engineer. These are not cheap to manufacture. I mean, because again, this is not the kind of thing that you're going to sit down and make by hand. So you've got to pay for big, expensive CNC machines. You've got to have CNC operators that are uh, professional enough to not uh, break parts all day and break materials all day and, and be precise. And you've got to have everything done to a specific degree. And it's all expensive ways of doing shit. You know, if this was just a folding knife uh, that they could go out in their shop and make by hand, uh, I'm sure it's a hell of a lot easier to do everything in-house. But when you have to invest in these unbelievably expensive machines and multiples of those machines, uh, and you know, you're making all your own parts, all your screws, your pocket clips, uh, everything in the world that, that, that goes into this, I, I can't even imagine what kind of investment that is. So to see them go to 100% in-house manufacturing that quickly is, uh, is a little bit crazy. So that must mean they've been selling a hell of a lot of knives. Now, their main goal was basically to produce a high quality out the front with a familiar feeling. Again, this doesn't look exactly like any other brands out the front, but it's not too terribly dissimilar. Let's be honest. There, you can look at this and, and for somebody that doesn't know a lot about each individual brand and each individual model within each brand, you probably could confuse this for another brand's knife because you don't know the exact shape or you don't know all the little details. But just kind of looking at it from a distance, you go, oh, is it that? No, it's not. It's This is, this is their own thing. And they wanted to do that with a price point that was between the expensive big brands that we've already talked about and the absolute low-tier trash we see flooding the market. They recognize that there's a, a, a gap between that $50 trash and $350 plus standard production out the fronts. And they decided, hey, you know, let's fill that gap. Let's give the highest quality that we can, not price it so crazy high that we're basically competing with the, the other brands, we're giving customers an option because you're going to see this all the time. When you go into Facebook groups in particular, go into any Facebook knife group and there's going to be questions all the time. Where can I get a uh, an out the front that's cheap? Okay, that's one statement. And this really isn't going to fit that customer. That's the customer that's looking for a $50 or $100 knife. This ain't that knife, buddy. But you're, a lot of times you're going to hear, I love the look of Microtech or I love the look of Heretic. But I just can't spend that much money. Is there anything I can find that's that's you know more affordable? It's a little bit less. And this name gets brought up a lot. Is it as good as a Microtech Ultratech? Yeah, uh, I can say that without a doubt. The way that it feels, the way that it operates, love the sound too. This feels every bit as good. May it feels as good in every way as an Ultratech, but better in the way that it fires, and better that it has a. It feels a little bit more substantial. Uh, for me, in my hands, this is right in between an Ultratech and a Combat Troodon. You know, it's not as big as a Combat Troodon. It's not quite as small and skinny as an Ultratech. It really is kind of its own unique in between size. And I really, really like it. It's a great size for carry. Nice weight to it. Not heavy at all. That, that switch is 
fantastic. And by the way, I'm, I'm getting off track here, but I, when I see something, I just got to call it out. The way they do their switch, the serrations on there are perfect. And I'm talking G&G Hawk level perfect. Where when your thumb pushes up against it, it feels like it's like you're stacking your you're, you're putting your finger against a stack of razor blades. They're not going to cut you. Don't get me wrong, but it feels like they are just digging into your skin, and you can see it lifting my skin away from my thumbnail. If your thumb slides off this thing when you're operating it, you got a problem. It is that is one of the nicest feeling switches I've ever felt. They did a, a friggin' fantastic, fantastic job on that. The other thing that I really dig about this is the fact that they're offering you an actual, real lifetime warranty. What does that entail? Repair or replacement. If you have any issues with your knife, it gets repaired or replaced. No questions asked, no hassle type of warranty. They don't argue with you and go, well, you know, it's it could be this or, you know, maybe you did that or, you know, you, it kind of smelled funny when it got here. You're not supposed to keep your knife up your ass. We don't warranty against that. You can keep this knife up your ass and they will still warranty it. By the way, I have not verified that. That may not be the case. But the fact of the matter is, they're not going to sit there and get defensive and argue with you like some other brands do. And I don't mean just out the front brands. I mean any production companies making knives. We hear more and more and more horror stories lately. So it's nice to hear that you're getting a no-hassle type of warranty. Now, that also includes lifetime resharpening. And while they're, they take it in for sharpening, they'll, they'll clean it, lubricate it, make any adjustments that need to be made to it so that you're getting basically a spa treatment out of the knife if you have it resharpened. And that's free. All you're going to do is, you know, you're going to box up and ship it to them. You're going to pay whatever shipping it is. But that's it. Now, let's take a good look at the blade. Nice double-edged blade. This thing was really sharp out of the box. I feel no need to put a new edge on it, which is fantastic. It's a little bit of a toothy edge as well, which I prefer. It means it's actually going to cut shit. They made this to be a performance-based knife. It was clearly made to cut. And now I know nobody's really using out the fronts as an EDC everyday cutting kind of knife because we have folders and fixed blades for these are really mostly for a different purpose. But I'd have no problem with this in my pocket on any given day cutting any normal things. Um, there is their logo right there etched into the aluminum. They did a, a nice anodizing on the aluminum. It looks good. It kind of has that dry, chalky feel to it that uh, Microtech has, uh, or has had for a long time. Like the uh, the overall design of this, there is the American flag right there in the body. They are very, very proud of this. No glass breaker on the back. For those of you that feel you need a glass breaker, sorry about that. But I know a lot of people that don't want a glass breaker, so that's going to make you feel good. Um, the clip appears to be reversible. If I had to guess, you would just take out that screw and reverse the clip for left-handed carry. And how often do you see that? Actually, I, I don't know. If, I can't think of any that I've owned that you could do that with. Maybe they, they were reversible and I just never cared because I don't need to carry one on the left. Um, I like the, uh, the milling in the, uh, center of the blade too. It just adds a little bit of character. There's no functionality to it that I could think of, uh, but it looks really good. It's marked on the other side, 20 CV. Another thing that you'll like about this over some other brands, there's not a whole bunch of billboarding. It's very simple. The brand name, the blade steel, that's it. Not a bunch of other crazy shit just written all over it. They've got a nice stonewash finish on there. Looks good and clean. The button, God, I, the, the, the button, is the switch is just fantastic. Clip is great. Sure, I'd love to have a fancier clip, but again, you're spending $250, bub. You're not going to get a crazy milled sculpted clip. Maybe in the future, if they ever do high-end special editions, we might see something like that. But uh, uh, this clip works great. I've carried this now only for a day, but I did want to make sure it was in my pocket. I want to see how it felt. The retention was fantastic. Love 
love this thing. It's really, it's a great EDC out the front. It's not your high end out the front. It's not your big fancy show off piece out the front, but it's a good everyday carry. They do black, they do the blue. I want to say there was an orange, but I don't remember. You'll have to go look on Steel Capital's website and look on uh, Axial's website to see all the different colors. There's not a lot of colors. I'll tell you that right now. All right. Now, you're going to want to know, again, if, especially if you're one of those people that hops in those Facebook groups and asks about the uh, cheap out-the-front knives, you've got Cobra Tech and about a dozen other brands that are white-labeled. Uh, white, what white-label basically means is there is one OEM, there's one factory, and this factory, that factory happens to be in China, that will make a bunch of the exact same product, and you pay them to put your name on it your brand name, and then they ship it to you. They can either ship you complete knives or semi-complete knives that you'll finish the assembly on so that you can lie and say, made in USA. They're garbage. They're absolute trash. Know your fucking place, trash. You used to only see those brands at gun shows. Now they're kind of popping up all over the web and everything else. Um, you know, you'd see them at gun shows sold by people with signs that said, made in the USA with a lifetime warranty and all kinds of shit. And what's worse is that some of those brands sell for as high as this. You could spend 250 on some of those. And they're, by the way, most of those end up being complete, complete knockoffs of Microtex and other popular out the fronts. They have no shame about it. And some aren't. They're slightly different designs. Here's the deal with those. Um, I've talked about this a lot to people individually on the internet, but to put the statement out there for more people to hear, those brands are wholesaled and branded for these companies for $30 per knife. I want you to really think about that, $30 per knife. Now, I know this because at one point many years ago, I was working for a company and at the time, they thought that they wanted to branch out and get into selling some production knives. And they wanted to have some that were made for them. And the Chinese factory who makes those rebranded knives sent us samples and pricing. Now, realize if the cost is $30 to the brand, to the company, their actual cost is about $8 to $12. Some of these companies are selling those knives for $70. 80 a hundred dollars other ones are selling those exact same knives with a different brand name on them claiming to be made in the usa for as high as 250 what you're buying is a 30 dollar cost which costs really about eight dollars to make you're there you cannot make a quality knife for eight to twelve dollars it cannot be done period i don't care how big of a company and manufacturer you are it cannot be done now with that out of the way Let's talk about the other important thing. How is the lockup? Honestly, it's pretty much just like a Microtech or any other standard double action out the front. You're not going to get deadlock. You know why? Because this is $250 and this is $1,200 to $1,500 depending on who's selling it. But this is a $1,200 custom made knife Nothing is ever going to compare to this in terms of functionality, solidity, reliability, but you're paying for that. Yes, this is still and probably will forever be my favorite practical out the front. Yeah, there's beautiful dress ones uh, that, are, that are out there. Jeff Harkins is, make, has made incredible, beautiful customs that are like jewelry pieces. And um, I have a custom being made right now by Patrick Famine, which I'm very excited about. That will be like men's pocket jewelry, but adding in better reliability and, and solidity. But when it comes to EDC practicality, solidity, the fact that there is absolutely no way for that blade to ever wiggle, even in the slightest, it's always going to be this knife because there is nothing else that does what the deadlock model c does period this is it so it's not a fair comparison how many of these can you buy for the cost of one of these i suck at math that wasn't rhetorical i'm, I'm asking i don't know but when you compare this to any other standard production out the front in this similar vein of a hard anodized 
uh, aluminum frame, stone wash blade that you'd be paying anywhere from 280 up to about 450 in these other brands. This compares not only favorably, but in my opinion, a little superior in a couple things here and there that I've mentioned. Now, does that mean that I have any dislike at all for Microtech or Heretic or um, anybody else? No. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Guardian Tactical, but I just, I just think their designs are ugly as hell. Uh, I'm sure they're made wonderfully. They're just not my cup of tea. So, yeah, I still, I will always continue to buy the other brands. I think they're fantastic. They're well made. I've never, ever had an issue with any of the out-the-front Microtechs or Heretics that I've owned. They've always been fantastic. But this fires harder than most of the Microtechs I've had. I would put it up there. Let's see. Combat Troodon fires pretty hard for a double action. Um... Yeah, and then all the Marfion customs that I've had. But again, you're talking $1,000 and up. So for this to perform at that level and feel like that is amazing. By the way, I haven't, I haven't abused it, but I have not gotten this to derail one time. Now, I'm not saying it can't happen. It can't happen with a Hulk. I'm not saying that about this. I'm just saying... I have probably opened and closed this 500 times in the past two days since I got it. And I have not had a single misfire. So that tells me right there, because I have misfired tremendously more expensive knives from other brands within you know, the first hour or two of playing with it, sometimes within minutes. Again, that's not a, that doesn't mean they're garbage quality. It just means they weren't meant to do whatever screwing around I was doing. And you can always reset them. There is a reset that you can do. You don't have to freak out and panic. But I have not had that happen with this. So there you go. I think it's fantastic for the money that you're spending. I do wish a few things. I do wish there were more colors available and blade finishes available. I think they had the blade shapes covered. I think they're good with the blade shapes. They have a good amount. Uh, I wish there was more colors. Uh, I also wish there was a little bit, a little more personality to the, the, the knife. Even something as simple as if they had filled in their logo with white or silver or something, um, just to make it pop a little bit more. Or if they did all the anodizing and then went back over these bevels where they were satin finished. I'm not saying redesign the whole knife and, and it's got to be all kinds of crazy and put bumps over here and little nipples up here. I'm just saying a little, just a tiny little bit more, I think would really help set them apart. I think the only thing that may be holding Axial back from absolutely exploding is people look at it and go, personality wise, this is not much different than a base version Microtech that's only a few dollars more. You see what I'm saying? They, they can't fire it. They can't feel it for themselves. They can't feel that the edge is really, really good. They can't feel the, the tactility of this switch. They're ordering online based off pictures, and not all retailers take good pictures. They're seeing a blue out the front with a stone wash blade. And they can look at a Microtech that looks the exact same and go, well, Microtech's established. It's only a couple bucks more. I know the name. Uh, I'm just going to do that. If the, I'm not saying make it gimmicky, but if there was something about the design that just popped a little bit more, I think you'd have more people taking a chance and going, you know what? This has got something to it that the other brands don't have. And it's a great price. I'm going to check it out and see, see what I think of it. Or just the guy that already owns a whole bunch of other out the fronts that goes, hey, that looks different. Let me check that out. Why do you think Burn Knives does so well? Those things are crazy expensive customs. But they're so wildly different than everybody else's that most people that, that own one say they only, they only bought it because it grabbed their attention and it was so wildly different, even if it may have been in an impractical way. It was so different. They're like, I already own 15 other out the fronts. 
There's not a huge difference among them, but that one was wildly different. That's why I had to own it. So that's what I would suggest for Axial, is to do something to give it a little bit more flavor. It's a really great knife, but it feels like a plain Jane Sabenza right now. And while, yes, in the same way, plain Jane Sabenzas are great, you know what people generally want? They want a, they want a CGG Sabenza, or they want a unique Sabenza, or they want a Tad Gear Sabenza, or they want, a, they want something that's just a little bit special, a little bit different. And they'll spend a little bit more for it. I'm not saying do something crazy where your price point jumps out. Because you're clearly trying to hit a price point, And you've done such an amazing job and hit that price point. It just needs a little pizzazz. You know? Just a little bit. Nothing crazy. Two-tone blades, maybe. Or a hand rub satin blade for an extra 30 bucks or something like that. Like, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of ways to go. Maybe make the switch out of uh, titanium instead and then do some anodizing or something or your pocket clip. It could be any number of things. But I think I'm going to be very interested to see what they do in the near future. New models, new variations of this model. And uh, I got to tell you, if this thing holds up as well as I think it's going to, and if it continues to make me smile as much as it does right now, I'm probably going to own a fair amount of these. I can't count the tens, dozens of thousands of dollars that I've spent on Microtex and Marfion Customs and, and Heretics. Because and, I love a good quality out the front. I like this a lot. It just needs a little bit more to be a standout. I think anybody looking for a great one to carry and use and have fun with, and it's still attractive, of course, this is really great. And the price point makes it even more attractive. But there's something about having that knife that you just go, oh, this is special. Inlays, a faux bolster. Oh, guys, Axial, come on. Do up a nice angled bolster. And they can even have exposed hardware holding the panels in place. You cut a little channel in there to allow it to be an actual inlay and sit in there. You've got a bolster with one material and a scale with another material. Oh, come on now. We should talk. I'm telling you, I got some ideas. Anyway, um, so my general thoughts, it, it really is fantastic. Uh, the way that I came across this, I was on a thread on a Facebook knife group the guy wasn't even asking about out the fronts, I don't think. He, no, he was just saying, where can I get a good, high-quality, only American-made knife for under $200? And my comment was, <laughs> yeah, good luck. So few and far between. And then Cannon hops in and goes, hey, you know, actually, you should check out these Axial knives. And I'm like, you know what? I've heard about them. I actually sent a message to their PR guy or their marketing guy, and I never, ever, ever heard back because I'm, I'm gearing up for when my, my famine custom arrives. I want to do a new out the front video. Remember the, the very first automatic video I did? It's like over a million and a half views or whatever. I want to do something like that again where I compare the Axial to this custom to then the higher end custom, maybe throw a Microtech or two in there and really go over the nuances of all the price points. Never heard back from the guy. Maybe he just didn't get my email. That certainly happens. But uh, I said, yeah, I said, I've seen them and I think they're really cool, but I, I don't know if they're any good. I've never handled one. I've never seen one in person. And I said, besides, they're not under 200 bucks like the guy was asking for. They're 250, 265. I said, you know, there may be dealers out there that sell them for less than the Axial does directly. I said, but still, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell somebody, yeah, buy one because I've never handled one. I don't know what the quality is like. And then he replies back. He's like, you know what? He goes, I'm a dealer for Axial, and I've got a few in stock right now. I'm happy to send one out to you just so you can get a feel for it and understand that these really are damn good knives. He didn't throw a hard sales pitch at me. He didn't get defensive and go, you don't know what you're talking about. Because, you know, everybody on the Internet's like that. You don't know what you're talking about. My opinion's more important than yours. And that was the way I had approached it, too, when he initially commented and said, oh, you should check out Axial. I wasn't like, oh, that's garbage, because I hadn't handled it. I'm like, I've heard good things, but I don't know personally, you know. 
So it all worked out. He and I started talking. Turns out I knew him years and years and years and years ago under an internet pseudonym that I never connected to this. So we started chatting. He got this out in the mail to me right away. And as soon as I opened the box, I messaged him and went, holy shit, you were right. You were right. This really is nice. And I could tell you right now, this could be priced easily $75 more. And even the cheapest of buyers wouldn't complain once they held it. That's what I think of it. And that was my experience with it. That was my way of getting my hands on one. Uh, dude, thank you so much. Check out Steel Capital, not just for the Axials. They carry a bunch of other brands. They're all American made. And again, they're doing that sale through Labor Day. I dig it. And um, I'm really hoping to see... Really hoping to see more out of this brand. I hope they don't just disappear. I think that's the reason why I would tell some of you to buy them. If you're even somewhat curious, buy it. Put some more money in their pocket. Let them put some more money back into design and R&D. And let's see what else they got floating around in their brains that we don't know about. I want to know. I, I, I kind of got to know. That's just, that's just me, though. Anyway, uh, that's about it for me. This ran way longer than it should have. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next video.